Hey everyone, welcome to part 3 of this Dark Urge Tactician Guide for Baldur's Gate 3. We just got our Deathstalker Mantle and I want to show you just how good this equipment is by going back into the grove and then we're going to go get into a fight and I'm going to solo this entire fight without the enemy even seeing me thanks to the Deathstalker Mantle and the build that we're just starting to make come together. Inside the makeshift prison, we're going to run around side Saz's cage and then hop down until we get to this lower level. There's going to be a stone door over here that you should be able to perceive and then you can use it to go inside the underground passage. What we want to do is start to sneak forward so that the enemy up ahead doesn't see us. Now there is a booby trap off to the right side and we do not want that thing to hit us. So while still sneaking, we're going to go forward until we can see the rune on the left side. You want to separate your character from the other ones and then sneak forward and then activate that rune of the bear to turn off the trap. Now what I'm going to do is hide just outside of their field of view and I can use a sneak attack ranged attack to initiate the fight against these goblins here. Unfortunately I missed but it's not a big deal because the enemy is surprised and I get to go again because I have the assassin subclass I get all of my points refunded to me so now I'll use another sneak attack range on the same enemy this time I'll hit him it's an automatic critical hit because he's surprised and now I'm invisible and the enemy can't see me. I'm gonna run away they still think they know kind of where I am thanks to that ghostly figure over there but they're surprised they can't do anything really at this point they can't see me I'm outside of their field of view so they're just gonna run around and not know what to do at this point they're just going to waste their turn talking and then I'm going to get my next turn so I can use another sneak attack range to take aim at this enemy and I will kill him that reapplies my invisible and then I'm just going to scoot around a little bit and then pass my turn they're going to once again not know what to do so on my turn again, I'll use another sneak attack and hit them. I definitely would recommend whenever you hit someone, you just move away because if they have the ability to detect an invisible presence, you do not want to be right by where they think you are as that ghostly image. So hit the enemy, relocate, they won't see you, and then you're able to take them out very efficiently. We're just going to sneak forward a little bit further while still being invisible, and I'll hit this guy with a sneak attack range attack, and there you go. That's four enemies dead. They didn't see me or do anything, and it's all thanks to that Deathstalker mantle. I'll get my party back together. There's going to be the enemies on the ground that you can go ahead and loot, and also right, Findle is on the ground too. He's not able to do anything right now because he's unconscious. He's still alive, however, and I can just pickpocket him while he's on the ground to grab the key of the ancients. That raises my nature score by one. It's not very important, but it's worth stealing anyway. And then if you want to pick him up, then all you have to do is to throw a potion at him. Just a normal, everyday potion. Go ahead, grab that, choose to throw it, and then you will hit him with it, and he will wake up. So I'm just going to separate one of them from the rest of the stack and use that to throw directly at Findle on the ground, and then he's going to wake up. Waking him up does give us 10 experience, and I figured I might as well just get that 10 experience for a potion that I wouldn't use either way. Oh, thank you, thank you. I thought I was going to die down here. How did those goblins slip into the grove? It's my fault. I thought I'd given them the slip, but they followed me through the tunnel back there. I must tell the others what happened. I stay. All right, no reason to finish that conversation. We're just going to run forward. Again, you can loot all the enemies here and then climb up the rocks. You can jump up to this upper rock or go to the right and climb up that way. But we're going to get up to the top and then I'm going to start sneaking around and go over and touch the glowing rune over on the right side here. This is the rune of the eagle. And once we disable that, then we don't have to worry about that booby trap hitting us either. So now we're free to run around and explore, do whatever we want to in this area. I'm just going to hop down and then go back out the way that we came in after I looted all these enemies. With all the enemies looted, I'm just going to continue running toward the north until I get back through that stone door, taking me back to where Saza is being kept in the cage.
Let's turn toward the left and then we're going to jump up onto the ledge that we jumped down earlier. Saza's in her cage and Karlak doesn't like it very much if you let her out, so she's just gonna sit in that cage and think about what she's done. We'll just leave her there. These equipment chests caught my eye, but there's nothing in them, so you can totally skip that. Let's leave the makeshift prison and then go over toward the right side. As you run along, then you will see some vendors around the right side and the left side. There's one in particular that we want to talk to just past Roland, and that would be Auntie Ethel. Ah, uh, Fitz isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! You're twitching something fierce, love. And your eyes. You look like you don't know the meaning of the word sleep. Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. Oh, she seems well-meaning enough. Let her fuss over you. Aha! You take a sip of that and you'll feel right as rain, sweetie. Rogue, this is an expertly made healing potion. Nicely done. Oh, stop with the sweet talk. Here, take the end of the bat, just in case. I'm sorry to go on about it, but are you all right? You're looking awful peaky. We'll have more interactions with her a little later on, so right now I'm just going to choose to leave, because this is all we really needed to do Trust is me, meet her the first time I'm inside the grove. Let's continue on toward the side here, and then I'm going to run into the stone door and talk to Zevlor another time. Zevlor is pretty much just straight in front of us as we run into the secluded chamber a little bit to the left. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here, or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? You have to resist. No, the druids are too powerful. We can't stand against them all. It's Korga's influence. Without her twisting things, I believe the druids might see sense. Then why don't you get rid of her? A low thought. But I'd be lying if I said I hadn't considered it. But the druids would slaughter us. We'd have to get close to Korga, within striking distance. I can't manage that, but they've already let you pass once. What's it worth to you? To get these people to Baldur's Gate? Everything. I'm still hoping Korga can be swayed from this madness. But if not, leaders need to make tough decisions. We do what we must. So we have a choice. Do we kill Korga or not? There are definitely consequences with either path. What I'm going to do, however, is just ignore Korga and I'm going to focus on freeing Halson and Halson will be the one to intervene in this matter. So it's a way that we can get through it without having to kill her and a whole bunch of druids too. Well, let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to run toward the east up the slope, and there's going to be Aaron the Trader right here. I'm just going to pickpocket a couple things off of him so that we can replenish our supplies of trap disarm toolkits and thieves kits, as well as a supply pack that he has. Definitely a good idea to save the game before doing this in case something goes wrong. And then I'm just going to grab the things that I need and then continue on. All right, let's get out of here before he notices anything went wrong. We're going to run toward the north and we're going to go back down into the lower grove area so that we can meet up with Nettie. That might be worth a look. When you get to the lower portion called the Sacred Pool, turn to the right and follow the path around. On your mini-map, there's going to be a quest marker showing you where to go. It's this big stone door on the right side. So interact with it, and then we're going to go inside the area below. So now keep going down by where you see Korga, and then turn a little bit toward the right. There's a big door in front of you. Go in there, and Nettie is healing a bird on the right side. Your dialogue options don't matter so much, so I'm just going to kind of skip through it quickly to move on. I see you. Just give me a moment. Right there. Now, Trow. 
Last time I saw one of you folk, he tried to slit me open. I hope you're more agreeable. Just be glad, my bad. Come here. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. A tadpole. Um, I... Uh, come. We were honest we with Nettie about the Mind Flayer Parasite. She's going to lead us over into another room that we can't get in normally. And once we're inside, we'll just go straight ahead and we will have another cutscene with her. I'm just going to skip through it quickly, but in the end, just agree to take the Wyvern Toxin so that we can get it in our inventory. It doesn't matter that Carlac disapproves of it, however, we're going to get more than enough approval for being able to romance her. So I'm just going to kind of skip through this all pretty quickly, and then it will be able to Seems move on so. again just agree to take the wyvern toxin so that we can get it in our inventory you don't have to be here. please all right let's see what we can do of course now tell me what's been happening victims can how do you pick up the parasite a mind fl look but you seem like a good this is a vial of wyvern poison swear to me you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms I tried to be sneaky and just say, all right, hand it over, but she called me on that. Swear it. I swear. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never- Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, because you should all be changing. There should be a small mind flip. The thing, it's one of their- Not yet, anyhow. Could be. When whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. The thing is, I've sent Bert. You, if you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. Thank you. It would make. I wish I could tell you more. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. Good luck out there. Okay, we have the wyvern toxin. We agreed to find Halson. Nettie is going to walk away, and then we can go over to the table right where she was. And if we search around here, we will find on the table there's going to be a mind flare parasite specimen. So go ahead, steal that. And then this whole area is just full of things to loot. So go crazy, loot everything around here that you can, and then we're going to continue on once we're done. Okay, once you're done looting, we do want to pickpocket Nettie, so sneak over right behind her. Probably a good idea to save the game, and then you can steal another supply pack from her. And now we're just going to run away before she knows that anything happened. And then we're just going to continue on toward the southwest. We're going to go back to the entrance, up these big stairs, and that will take us back outside. We agreed to help Master Halson, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So let's start by doing some fast traveling. If you look at the map, there are some side quests around us. Kill Korga, we will resolve peacefully. There's also Hunt the Devil, we'll take care of that one a little bit later on. But we want to go over toward the Goblin Camp that is currently in that black area. Let's fast travel to the Blighted Village, that's the closest waypoint to the Goblin Camp. And then once we're there, we just have to go kind of straight toward the west. So we're going to continue on this way through the broken wall and then we're going to go down and stick toward the left side of the path. That's going to take us to a very large bridge and when you get to the other side of it then you should get a little bit of a cutscene. There's going to be a little raider group of goblins there but because we're a drow we kind of have the dominance over them and that's going to help us out pretty nicely. So run straight forward until you get into your cutscene. Shove out the claw! Drow coming through! And there you go, 140 experience for doing absolutely nothing. If you weren't a drow, you have to go through some conversation skill checks, but it's pretty easy to do to get that experience. Let's continue on toward the north now. We're going to go up to this bridge, and then a little cutscene is going to play out. And in the end, we do receive the mysterious artifact. Let's keep going straight ahead across the bridge and into the goblin camp. Volo is straight ahead of us, but we're going to ignore him for right now. We're going to focus on going left and then talk to Krola about chicken chasing. And once that conversation's done, then we'll continue on from there. We want to free the owlbear cub, but first we have to talk to Volo to make that progress. So talk to Volo, and then we're going to just cheer him on by saying bravo. 
They're just going to escort him away. I'll skip the rest of that cut scene because it doesn't matter. And then we're going to go over and talk to Krola one more time. Brave enough to take on our new chicken. It's a big one, but that's just more for the chasing. Sure, I'll play. But then we're going to say I have no desire to gamble. And then we're going to leave. Now the owlbear will run away. We can go talk to the owlbear cub. We're going to say, animal handling, kneel down, you won't hurt him. We get a skill check of 10 here, so let's roll that one. You notice a shiver run through him, but his mother is gone, taken. All Offer him your hand, he can follow your creatures. scent to your camp in the wilderness. The cub tilts his head. The cub seems anxious to leave. But afraid to defy the goblin. Okay, now let's talk to Krola one more time. Brave enough to take on our new chicken. It's a big I'm leaving, and the owl bear's coming with me. Is you now? Reckon I feel as the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Intimidation. You love this game enough to die over it. This will give us a skill check of 10, so let's roll that and then keep on going. Hell's fine. We'll just take the fat bird, if it means that much to you. We'll now in a couple long rests, the owl bear cub will come to our camp and we can work on getting it to stay with us. Let's go over to Grat the Trader. We want to sell off all the old things that we don't need. You definitely want to keep that wyvern toxin though. And then we do want to purchase one thing from Grat and that is going to be the gloves of archery. We gain proficiency with longbows and shortbows, but more importantly, our ranged weapon attacks will deal an additional two damage, which is very good for the kind of build that we have. So I'm just going to throw those on right now, taking off the Gloves of Power. But the Gloves of Power do offer a plus one to Sleight of Hand. So I'm going to put those on to Asarian because that's pretty good for him. We're able to do lots of stealing with him a little bit more easily. So with all of that equipment now in place, we're going to then switch out our weapon to the Steel Forge Sword. And then we're going to equip the Short Sword into our offhand. So we'll have the Steel Forge Sword and that Short Sword being dual wielded. And that gives us a nice boost to our attack damage as well. While I'm at it, I'm going to equip the Key of the Ancients just to get that plus one to our nature score. There's really no reason to do that, but it's better to have it than to not have it, and I didn't have any other headpiece that I was wearing. So now what we want to do is just to continue on straight toward the north, and we're going to go inside the big doors. You may want to run off to the right side first just to unlock the waypoint. I'll do that a little bit later on. But ultimately, you do want to go through these heavy oak doors and into the Shattered Sanctum. Let's run forward until we get into a cutscene. Oi! Ain't no party in here. We're doing the absolute's work. State your business now. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. There's no need to use your lithid powers. Just use detect thoughts, proper thoughts. Here's a skill check looking for a nine, so let's roll that one and then keep going. Can't be here to see the true souls. Those types don't even bother to wait. I'm here to see the true souls. Do you want to keep them waiting? Well, I didn't say that, but you'll need to be more specific. Absolutes blessed us with free. Your kind usually don't deal with boss Ragsley and priestess Gar. Guessing you're after Mimfara. Could be her blood by the looks of you. Drow, I've got an audience with Minthara. <laughs> audience is right. She's an uppity one and no mistake, but she knows her business. She's in telling the war chiefs what's what. Next raid's gonna be a big un, I hear. Asarian gets an inspiration point called a very important parasite. We also got a whole bunch of experience for the team by getting through that dialogue nicely. 
Now let's keep going down until we can talk to Priestess Gut straight ahead of us toward the north. Now, I am going to not take the brand, but I would recommend that you do take the brand because it's just better. It allows you to do some things, especially with pieces of equipment. So go ahead and talk to her. Take the brand, even though I'm not going to. The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark. Let's the back and it's you ready. Brace yourself. This'll sting. Feel free to accept the brand if you want to by holding out your hand. But if you don't want it, just say, Ashley, I'd rather not go through with this. Maybe you don't need it. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip a bunch of the dialogue here, but we are going to ask her for help dealing with our parasite. A creature? Let me take a closer look. I ain't seen anything like this before. Fine, do what you can. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Priestess Gut is now going to walk back to her own private quarters. We just have to follow her around over toward the west. So just follow her around. She will appear on the minimap as a quest marker now. So we're just going to go over there. We're going to agree to let her help us, but not go through with the whole procedure. We just want to do it initially so that we can get a little bit more affection with Karlak because she likes us to agree with this. Ready to clear your head. What exactly are you going to do? Whatever the absolute tells me to. Don't worry. She loves you. I can tell. All right, I'm ready. Don't want a crowd of gawpers. Everybody else needs to leave. So that dialogue choice forced us to separate from the rest of our team. We're just going to get our team back together and then just leave. So we got the affection that we wanted to with Karlak, and now we're getting out of here. Turning toward the right as we exit the room, there's going to be a row of moon glow over here. Let's go ahead and save the game because we're going to try to do a little bit of pickpocketing. It took me quite a while to get into the right position with this because there is a guard that patrols around. There's also going to be a couple other guards over there by the door. So we just have to wait until we get into the right position to do a little bit of stealing. Ultimately, what worked best for me was to leave the party in the room where Priestess Gut is and then come on out with the Dark Urge and Astarian. Now, Astarian does have the Gloves of Power, which give him that plus one to sleight of hand. So I will use him for the stealing portion of this. I'm just going to separate him from the rest of the party as well so Lazelle and Karlak don't follow. And then I can come over here and get really close to where Roa is. Like I said before, there is a guard that walks around here, so you have to wait for him to make his rounds and then leave so that we don't get spotted. He's going to go down here, and then he turns around and comes back. So once he comes back, he's going to continue his patrol around, and this is a good time to sneak in there so we can get right up close to Roa. And then the only thing that I really need to steal here is going to be this potion of invisibility. So let's grab that, and then we can run away from here before she notices that we stole anything from her and accuses us. You can also talk to her to learn a little bit more about the Zentarim, and of course you can sell off all the old stuff that you don't need if you have anything remaining there. So let's go on over this way, and then we're going to go over toward the outside area. We want to run straight south because we're going to go over and poison all of the goblins, and we're going to deal with everything outside, and it's going to be pretty easy with our Dark Urge character. Let's run all the way over to the doors, and then we're going to separate the Dark Urge from everybody else. Now let's take control of the Dark Urge and head outside solo. Thanks to our newly acquired Potion of Invisibility, we can run around here without being seen. So we're going to go into Astarian's inventory because he's the one who stole it, and then we're going to drink it. That turns us invisible for 10 turns. Let's run forward and a little bit toward the left, and there's going to be a booze tub here. Let's interact with it to combine the booze tub with the wyvern toxin that we got from Nettie. And combining that will create the poisoned booze tub and also get us an inspiration point called Haunted One, now it's a party. We're still invisible, so we can just run around as much as we want to, and they're going to spend their time drinking the poison booze, which will eventually kill off a whole bunch of them. 
up here is a good area to hide out and get some sneak attacks if you want to fight them like this but I'm going to wait just a little while longer and I'll show you a more sneaky way to get it without engaging all of them in combat. We do have to wait for all of our turns of invisibility to wear off. It doesn't take too long. While I was waiting, I also got the Charlatan Spiked Inspiration Point because I guess Asarian likes to poison a bunch of goblins too. And now you can see that they're all starting to succumb to death. Not all of them die, however. Uh, a lot of them did. So that clears out a ton of the enemies in this area. And now we can just kind of hide out over here. I was really hoping to get a sneak attack over here, but they did spot me and engage me in conversation. I did not want to use my Illithid power on this guy, so I just decided to use my Drought Intimidation to get through this one a little bit easier. So we were able to intimidate him. He doesn't want to fight us now, but they're all going to be kind of on high alert in this area. Now I'm going to run outside the main gates here. And if you run all the way toward this big spiky wall, then you can crouch down and you can get a sneak attack off on these enemies. The first one goes down without a problem, however, I failed the stealth check here, so I was spotted. I was able to use another sneak attack range to attack Grat the Traitor, but I completely missed it, which is really unfortunate. So now what I want to do is try to run away and get out of his line of sight. This was a total misclick. I meant to use Cunning Action Hide, but I accidentally used Dash instead. So I didn't get to hide, but that's okay. The enemies are now going to try to run toward me, but I'm really far away from them and they can't really see me or do anything to me. They're just trying to close the gap a little bit. So you can see there's six enemies in this area. They can't do a whole lot to me. I'm going to run away a little bit further on. I was really hoping to be out of his line of sight so I could use cutting action hide and then get another sneak attack ranged on him. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for me. I could, however, just use a normal ranged attack and that did just enough damage to take him out and turn me invisible. So now the enemy really can't see me. They don't know what to do at this point. They just try to run as close as possible to where they think that I am, and then all they can really use is detect presence, but because I'm still nowhere near them, they don't see anything, and they start to walk away. We're going to then follow them up a little bit closer, and we're still invisible. We get two turns of invisibility using that Deathstalker mantle, so I can run up, and even if it wears off, they don't really care. They don't like me as much. I lost a little bit of reputation with them, but they're not going to be openly hostile toward me at this point. So what I can do is just kind of chill out here. The guys come back, and now I can go up to this guy and use the sneak attack melee to finish this guy off. And he's going to be dead. The enemy doesn't really care still. I can go through and loot Gret the Trader to get some really good stuff, including three supply packs. That is actually pretty huge for us, as well as the hide armor plus two. We'll continue on through here. There's going to be a couple enemies, but they don't really care if they see me or not. I can just stroll right through this area without a care in the world. So we're going to continue on now a little bit toward the right. This is toward the east. There's going to be a couple enemies over here. This is Crusher. No matter what Excuse I do, me. I cannot get Crusher to attack me. It was really weird. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then there's also some more enemies over here. I want to go all the way over here toward the south. There's one enemy just kind of hanging out by the cliff here. I'm just going to come up behind him and then I will just shove him right off the cliff and he's going to fall down and die. So there's a 70% chance of that working and down he goes. He falls into the chasm and he's dead. Now I'm just going to run over here if you want to get a little bit of a high ground advantage, you can climb up this ladder. I tried to get a sneak attack, range attack off on the guy just below me here. Unfortunately, I didn't quite have the angle on that. I can still lock in the attack, but it is going to cause me to go back around and walk around the outside. So that's okay. I still am able to go around and I'm able to attack this enemy and get the kill pretty easily. 
If that didn't work, however, in combat started, I could just use another sneak attack, range attack, because we have the initiative and we are able to use our assassin subclass to get those early attacks off. So here's Crusher. No matter what I did, I could go right up to him and attack him with my main hand. I could use sneak attacks. I used sneak attack range from up above. And all he did was just keep healing. It didn't really matter. So kind of strange here. He does not want to fight us at all. He will just take the attacks and then he will heal up. So very strange indeed. Let's climb up these knotted roots. There's going to be another enemy up top here. We're just going to sit right behind them and then crouch down. We will then use our sneak attack melee to start the combat. We didn't do quite enough damage to him, so we do have to fight. We get a couple enemies against us, but we can use another sneak attack melee to finish off this enemy. We'll turn invisible thanks to our Deathstalker mantle, and then we just have to go away. So we'll climb down away from the ghostly image from where they think that we are, and we're just going to hide out down here for a moment. Then it's going to be the enemy's turn. They're going to try to get close to us and detect our presence, but they won't be able to find anything because we're nowhere near that. And that ends combat. The enemy is no longer hostile toward us, even though they don't like us. We lost even more reputation. Funny how that works, where slaughtering all of them makes them like us less. Well, now we're going to go over here. The enemy is hanging out in this bottom area. I can just use another sneak attack melee to finish off this enemy, and they're gone, and we can keep on going. We're going to run over into the main area again over toward the right side. There's going to be an enemy sitting over here. This one was damaged by the wyvern toxin but didn't actually get killed. So another sneak attack melee will finish off this enemy and that's all there is to that one. There are a few more enemies in this area that now do attack us because it was close enough to that last enemy. They kind of noticed what was going on there. So I'm just going to use a sneak attack range attack to attack this enemy and I'll turn invisible and then can just run away from that ghostly image and they won't be able to detect where I am anymore. I'm coming for you. Just like all the other instances, they're going to try to get close to where they think I am with that ghostly image, but they'll look around, they can't see anything, I'm still invisible, so the combat will end. Well, we've cleared out just about everyone around this area. There's a couple big guys left over there. I don't want to try to challenge them alone because I won't be able to one or two shot them. I really do need the rest of my team to finish them off pretty easily. So let's just go back inside the Shattered Sanctum and we will then collect our party members and then we'll head back outside to finish off those other enemies. Back outside, we want to go over to where the enemies are. There's going to be this guy here, Bayo Eknuk. We want to hide and then use a sneak attack melee against him. That's going to take away about a third of his health. He just wants to arrest us. However, we will just continue on with our attack. Now combat begins, we get some good initiative rolls, I can use another sneak attack melee to hit him again, taking off another third of his health, and then I'm going to switch it on over to Astarian, he will also do a sneak attack melee against him, and that is going to finish this enemy off. So without this guy ever hurting us, we depleted all of his health and he's now out of the fight. That leaves us with the guard Gurgon enemy and one goblin that we have to deal with. So I'm going to just run away here and then hide and then I want to use the Dark Urge just to climb up this ladder and get up to the high ground. Once we get up there we still have a bonus action so we might as well just use Cunning Action Hide to make ourselves a little bit harder to detect. Now let's turn over, this is Krola, she's going to run forward a little bit and she will then just wait for us at the bottom of the ladder gonna go forward with Lazelle and try to get some damage in on this guard Gurgon. I do 12 damage on the first attack and then use action surge to get another attack and I will do 7 damage the second time around. So I took a good chunk of his health away. Now I run away and provoke an attack of opportunity. I would highly recommend you just stand your ground because as you can see he hits me and takes over half of my health away. That was really bad and that puts me into a big disadvantage. So I am far enough away that he's probably not going to attack me but it's not good going forward. 
Corolla's down here, I'm going to have Karlak attack her, and it's going to do 7 damage, reducing her health only to 2. So that's pretty easy. I should be able to pick up another attack, and then there's another time where I made a mistake and provoked another attack of opportunity when I probably just should have stuck around here. Big Guy delivers a big slam on Astarian, taking away a ton of health. But now it's the Dark Urge's turn. I can use a sneak attack range from this high ground to do a considerable amount of damage, hitting him for 18. And then I wanted to use my offhand melee attack to finish off Krola. I should be able to do that, no problem. However, I missed, and that was a big bummer. That should have been a very easy kill, and then I would have turned invisible. So that didn't work out, but now I can use a Starion to use a sneak attack melee to do another 13 damage to him. Now I had a couple choices, I could either try to use an offhand attack against him, I didn't want to provoke another attack of opportunity because it would have straight up murdered Astarian, so I'm just going to pass the turn and then let Krola get a little bit of damage on the Dark Urge. Let's re-engage with the enemy by having Lazel come forward and then we're going to attack him one more time here. So he's got 26 health, and I hit him for 6 damage, now he's down to 20. I can bring Karlak in and do another attack, just to get a little bit more health off of him. So that was 9 damage, he's down to 11, and I'm going to pass the turn. He's going to slam Karlak, and that's going to do about 9 damage to her. Back to the Dark Urge, I wanted to use my Sneak Attack Melee to do some really good damage to guard Gurgen. Unfortunately, it completely missed. That's really unfortunate for me. And now I'm going to use my Offhand Melee Attack to finish off Krola, turning invisible. Now I can run away without provoking another Attack of Opportunity. It's going to be a Saryan's turn now, so let's use our Sneak Attack Melee to do some good damage, and that will finish off Guard Gurgen. And we get level ups for the whole team, except for Lazel for some reason. But don't worry, she'll level up soon enough too. Go ahead, run through this whole area, and we're going to loot everything around here. There's also a bunch of meat hanging up over top, this roasted dwarf leg. So go ahead and grab all of that stuff too. It does weigh quite a bit, so I would recommend that you throw it over into your camp as well. Well, after the fight, then we're going to heal up, and then it's time to level up. Starting off, we have a Starion, a level 4 rogue. We get a health increase as well as a feat. I'm just going to go with ability improvement, throwing two points into dexterity, and I'll call that one good. And then it's going to move over to the Dark Urge. I'm going to do the exact same thing going with the ability improvement, and then I'm going to put two more points into dexterity for him as well. And finally, we have Karlak, level 4 Barbarian. She gets a health increase as well as a feat. I'm going to give her ability improvement, but this time I'm going to put 2 points into strength, raising her up to 19 strength. So all 3 of the characters got ability improvement and 2 points into their primary trait. Well, now what we're going to do is head back inside the Shattered Sanctum. None of the enemies inside care about what happened outside just moments ago. So they don't know anything. They're not hostile toward us. We're going to continue forward and then we're going to go down into the lower section. As soon as we get there, we're going to turn right and go up the stairs. There's a couple of goblins torturing a man over on the right side. So go over there and initiate a conversation with them. Unfortunately, as a drow, you can't really talk through it very well without losing approval with Karlak. If you agreed to either join in and do it yourself, or if you were to just stand by and watch, then she's not going to like that. If you just try to leave, then they stay there torturing him, and you want these guys to get out of here. So I wasn't able to persuade them to leave, unfortunately. Even if I were to switch it to another character, it's very difficult to do that. It does have a skill check of 20 trying to persuade them. So instead, what you can do is just straight up murder them. I'm switching back over to the Dark Urge, and then I'm going to hide, sneak up on this guy, Torture Spike. I'm going to then use a Sneak Attack Melee to start off the battle. It's going to do a lot of damage to him, not quite enough to kill him, however. I'm going to choose to attack, and then I'm going to use another Sneak Attack Melee to go after his friend. So because I have that Assassin subclass, I can use another full action and a bonus action in the first round of combat. Before the enemy has a chance to attack, I can also get automatic advantages on them. 
So I hit him and then I followed that up with my offhand attack as a bonus action and then I could just kill the remaining guy with a Starion. And that did provide enough experience for Lazal to level up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did with Karlak with Lazal. And that is I will get my feet and then I'm going to choose ability improvement. I'm going to dump two points into strength, raising her strength up to 19 and that will be good enough for now. So those two enemies are dead, now I can talk to Liam in the rack. We'll use Rogue Sleight of Hand, a simple tumbler lock, make short work of it. It does have a skill check of 7, which is pretty easy for us to get through, especially with all of our advantages and bonuses, all that good stuff. So we're going to free him from this. You can talk through all of this if you want to, or you can just skip it all. It doesn't really matter, he's going to then just run off and you'll be able to continue on. So after talking to him and choosing to leave, then he's going to run off. We're going to go back the way we came, this time turning it right and going just around the wall here to the other side. Now what I would strongly recommend is that you save the game because we want to get a permanent buff from this guy. This is Abdurak. Abdurak is a disciple of Loviatar and he is all about inflicting pain on people. So what we need to do is allow him to hit us three times, we have to pass his skill checks, and if we do that successfully then we will get a permanent buff that gives us an advantage whenever we get low on health, which is pretty good for tactician mode. Interestingly, when he asks about Pain Without Purpose being a terrible thing, the first two dialogue options are actually unique to the Dark Urge. They didn't appear on my other playthrough. And then when he talks about the look in our eyes, something terrible has happened to you, the first three options are unique to the Dark Urge. So those are kind of interesting. I'm just going to say, clever man, how did you know? And then we're going to continue on from here. Because when he asks about alleviating our pain, we're going to let him do that, and then we get a special dialogue just because we're Dark Urge. This man is of common stock. Only the poorest of men need settle for the spectacle of their own gore. And now we say, all right, why not? Oh, <laughs> both low and simply face the wall. So we're going to go ahead, face the wall, make sure that you have high health by taking a short rest if you need to, because he's going to come over here and start attacking us, and it will do some damage to us. So after that first attack, we get some dialogue options. You do not want to use constitution, instead use either performance or intimidation. You get a skill check with intimidation of 10 the first time around, so we're able to roll that and keep going. And then he's going to hit us for a second time. After the second attack, it's kind of the same thing. Do not use constitution, use either performance or intimidation. So I'm going to use intimidation the second time, and I get a skill check looking for a 10 here. So let's roll that one and keep going as well. It was a fine. And finally, he's going to hit us a third time. That's it. Welcome once again, don't use constitution, use performance or intimidation. I will once again use intimidation, and this time we do get a skill check of only five, so it's pretty easy for us to get through, and now we're moving on. <laughs> He's going to hit us again, but we don't have to do any more skill checks with him. Sweet child, you are... I am proud We'll choose a nice response like option step. one, thank you, I enjoyed myself. And now we get the Loviatar's Love permanent buff. You can see it down in the bottom left corner. Now, if you really want to totally maximize the amount of experience you can get in this area, there are a couple rats on the ground that you can kill. They only give one experience, though, so it's not really worth it. But hey, if you really want those extra two experience, then kill the two rats in this room. All right, well, I've gained my two experience. Now I'm going to leave the room, turn toward the right, and there's another door just to our right where Volo is being held. Make sure that you regroup your party member because you are automatically separated from them when you do that little thing with Abdurak. And then we can come into this room. Volo is in that cage. We're going to talk to Gribbo on the side. Don't go both now, she does not want to let Volo go, so we can ask if she has plans for the pigeon. That's what she calls Volo. What's it to ya? And now we can say that we were admiring him. I'd like one of my own. Then catch one. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. 
You can feel free to use either deception, intimidation, anything like that, but I'm going to use my illithid wisdom to just command her to set him free. It makes it pretty easy with the skill check of only two. I didn't realize who you was. Something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. He's the king. Well, we get the cage key, and now we can unlock the cage and talk to Volo. <laughs> Look at this. I'm quite saved. I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. And just how will you be accomplishing that? Volo Themp Geda. Once we mustn't tarry, but I hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Go to my camp. We'll talk there once we're both safe. Smashing. Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast... All right, Volo's going to run off to camp, and that's good for us. We're just going to exit the room, and then we're going to immediately turn over toward the right-hand side. We're going to run along this path all the way to the end. There's going to be a door on the far side, and we're going to go through the door down into the warg pens, and that's where we're going to find Halson caged up in bear form. So let's go through the warg pen entrance, and then we're going to continue straight ahead. We do have a fight in this room, so I would advise you to be prepared for that. Make sure that you're in good health. Definitely want to save the game. And then we're going to go over toward the right side where there's going to be some goblin children throwing rocks at a bear in a cage. So what we want to do ultimately is to make sure that we side with the bear against the goblins. We're juicing it up. Boss is thinking of... We made it. Look, look, you'll see. So now we're going to say, leave him alone. And we're going to attack the goblins. All right, we're put into a battle. We did get a good initiative roll here, and there's a couple of very weak enemies right in front of us. So I'm going to use a sneak attack against one of the enemies. This one is named One, and that will kill him off and turn me invisible. I can then climb up the ladder over here. So now I have a high ground advantage against anyone else, and I'm also invisible, so no one else can see me. So I started this battle with only 10 HP, and I'm going to finish the battle with all 10 HP because they're not gonna be able to see me. One of the enemies can summon in a big spider. It's not too big of a problem though. And then the other little child goblin is going to run away and try to get some help. We are not going to allow that though. We do not need more guards to rush in here in the middle of this fight. So let's just use another character to finish off that enemy and then they're all dead. We don't have to worry about reinforcements in this fight. The Conjured Spider here, it has a decent amount of health, it looks like it's got 31, however we can take it out fairly easily just by working together as a team. So I'm just going to stab it one time, doing a good amount of damage with my offhand, and then I can use Lazel to take a good swing at it. Unfortunately she missed, and I'm not going to bother using my action surge just now, but I can have Carlat come in and hit it good, and then we'll use Frenzy. Now it's going to switch over to the enemy's turn. They're going to try to web us up. And then we have another enemy that runs forward right past the Dark Urge. Doesn't see them because they're invisible. And will run over toward the cave bear, but isn't able to do a whole lot. The cave bear will retaliate and absolutely murder that goblin. So we don't have to worry about that one at all. There are some other things like Butcher Vrak here that's going to throw some items down toward us, like this bottle of grease that happened to knock over the cave bear. And there's a couple of these wargs. There are Fair and Tail. I think that's supposed to be a pun on like fairy tale or something. And they're trying to break out of the cage. Now as the Dark Urge, we do have that advantage and we're invisible, so we can shoot the enemies up here pretty easily. I'm just going to take a shot at that Conjured Spider, kill it, and now I'm going to renew my invisibility, and I'm just going to stay right up here where nothing can see me and I have a good advantage against everything. 
The Beastmaster can run around and open up the cage, letting those two wargs out. They're going to be a small problem for us, but we can handle them without much of an issue. So I'm going to just so basically fight this whole battle as ranged as possible. I want to stay away from the enemy so I'm not incurring a lot of damage. And I'm going to let the cave bear run over and do a lot of the fighting for us. He has a lot more HP than what I have. So he's able to run over there and be my frontline tank. And everyone else is going to be a back row kind of DPS sort of player. So we're just kind of hanging out here waiting for the enemy to finish up their turns as they run out of the cage and then it's going to be back to the Dark Urge to have a turn trying to assassinate some of the enemies from up on high. So we're going to use another sneak attack range. Looking down on the battlefield, we've got Beastmaster Zerk here. I can hit him and kill him off pretty easily. That will renew my invisibility and I'm all good there. Now I can take another sneak attack with a Starion and I missed again. Man, this mode is just killing me with all of these misses. But that's okay, we're going to keep going using all of our ranged attack. I did get a critical hit with Lazel, that's kind of nice for me. And then I'll follow that up with another shot from Karlak, but I do miss that one as well. The cave bear will run around trying to get some attacks in on the wargs over here. I probably would have preferred it if he had just killed off the goblin there, but that's okay. We're just going to continue fighting on just like what we were before. After the wargs turns, taking a couple shots at the cave bear and then running around, then it's going to be back to the dark urge. I don't have a really good shot from here, so I am going to run around toward the south side where the stairs are. That will give me a shot at the warg over here. So I'm going to try to hit this one. I didn't get the kill, so I'm not invisible anymore, but that's all right. I can always just run a Starion up and I can take a shot right here. So that warg's in pretty low health. I can just move Lazel up to take a shot at this one. I do get another miss there, and then it's going to be Karlak's turn to try her luck. And I do get a critical hit on that one, and that one takes out that warg. Okay, so now it's the Cave Bear's turn. He can attack and heal in the same turn, which is nice for me. And now it's going to be another turn of moving the Dark Urge forward and taking a shot with him. So once again, we're going to move into position and then we're going to do just a normal ranged attack and we're going to hit fair right here. It's going to do a lot of damage and kill him. Now there's only one more enemy, just another goblin hanging out there. So I can use a Starion to take a shot from way far away. It's a 65% chance to hit and I do get a really good damage roll on that one. I do 18 total damage, leaving only two health left. Lazel's going to take a shot and finish the fight. And once that fight's over, we'll talk to Halson. Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature, or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. I've been to the Emerald Grove. It's in danger. All right, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Mind Flayer Parasites. I'm going to skip through all of that and get to the important part toward the end. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. All right, how do I help? My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the Drow Minthara, the Hobgoblin Draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. You can gain a little bit of affection with Karlak if you say, I'll deal with this, you get to safety. There is no safety. Not while this rot festers. Once it is cut out, once the grove is secure, then I shall leave. Follow me then. Your bear form may prove useful. Be warned. My presence could make things more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. We're going to have some fun slaughtering this entire goblin camp with a giant bear at our side. So let's say, come with me. 
So be it. May Sylvanus lend us nature's fury. Halston will turn back into his bear shape, and then we're going to do a short rest just to make sure that all of our health gets up, and then we're going to run straight toward the south out the doors. As soon as we get outside, however, there's going to be some goblins that we have to kill, so just be ready. We're going to go out there and hopefully get a good initiative roll. Yeah, this wasn't so great. Astarian gets to go first, and if you look up at the portraits at the top, you'll see that the blue ones are our characters and the red ones are the enemies. But when you highlight an enemy, their portrait will turn white so you know which one that you're attacking. What I wanted to do is to sneak attack the enemy between Astarian and the Dark Urge, and that way if I killed them, then it would skip the enemy's turn because they're dead, and then it would go straight over to the Dark Urge's turn. So that didn't happen because I missed an attack, but now as the Dark Urge, I'm going to look around and I want to target the enemy that's in between the Dark Urge and Lazel, so that way I can kill that one and then it will skip directly over to Lazel's turn. So I'm going to use a sneak attack range to eliminate that enemy, he's gone, and now we get to skip directly over to Lazel's turn. It is very important in tactician mode to kill enemies in the right order so that you can get a turn to kill them before they have a turn to attack you. Well now with Lazel I'm going to jump forward and then I'm going to use a main hand attack just to attack this enemy. This is the only one that hasn't had a chance to attack yet. Now I'm going to move Karlak up next to this enemy so that I can attack it as well with a main hand attack. Unfortunately it was a gigantic miss so that kind of stinks for me because I didn't get the kill there the enemy can attack and does 11 damage to Karlak. I can actually control Halson now, so I'm going to move him up and then have him attack the enemy on the far side, doing enough damage to take him out. Halson does have some good healing spells, so definitely a lot of survivability using our cave bear friend. But I don't need to do anything right this second, I'm going to just leave everything as is, and I'm going to go back over to Astarian, who's going to do another sneak attack melee against this enemy, and misses again! That's the third miss in this same battle. So that kind the stinks I do get the offhand to hit and now I'm going to use a sneak attack range to finish this enemy off so we eliminated all those enemies it didn't go quite as well as I had hoped for but we can move on we're just going to follow the path back around and we are invisible just for two turns it's not really going to make any sort of difference because it will wear off by the next time I get close to the enemies I am going to start sneaking around and I wanted to get a sneak attack ranged on this enemy before it spotted me, however I was seen, I wasn't able to do that, so I'm just going to have to wait and then hit him again when he starts combat. Once they see Halson, that's when they will initiate combat for us, but I was able to get a sneak attack ranged off on him just because I get the initiative in the fight, and then I'll run forward while still invisible and I will use another sneak attack range to attack Gribbo up here. Unfortunately, it was a giant miss, but the combat does begin anyway, but I get to attack again as the first turn in combat, so I'll kill him that time, and then I get to run off to the side while still being invisible. So they don't know where I am, and now it's going to be uh, Asarian's turn. I'm going to move him forward, and then use a sneak attack range to attack this enemy as well. So here's Zerga over here. We'll do a sneak attack range, doing a good chunk of damage, about half the health, and then I'm going to use my cunning action high so this enemy does not know where we are at all because I've got invisible and hiding characters so they can't do anything it's now back to my turn I'll have Karlak go forward and use a range attack just to do a little bit more damage against Zerga and then it's going to be Lazel's turn to do the same thing moving forward and using a range attack Unfortunately, Lazel now misses. It's going to be Halson's turn. I can't do anything with him, so I'll skip it. It'll go back to Asarian's turn, and I can just use another sneak attack ranged to take this enemy down. All right, there's another group of enemies defeated. We're going to head down these stairs, and there's going to be some more enemies down on the lower level. They do spot us, and we get into a fight. I get a good initiative roll, and I can just use a Seek Attack range to finish off Warlock Grease down here in the bottom. That battle's over and I'm invisible, so I'm going to run down and try to get a shot off on one of the two enemies down in the lower level and try to finish them off. Unfortunately, they saw Halson, so a large fight breaks out and I'm not able to lock in that early sneak attack. Doesn't really matter though, I'm just going to reselect it. 
There's Zavout Mazul as well as the Booyag Shacht. I'm going to hit the Booyag over here, taking them out, and then I'm going to be invisible once again. I'm going to climb up this rope ladder just to get the height advantage, and I'm still invisible so no one can see me. Back over to Astarian's turn. Let's use a sneak attack range to attack the other enemy that we can see. And it's going to do almost enough damage to take them out, but not quite. Now we'll make him retreat up the stairs a little bit to stay out of harm's way. It's now Lazelle's turn. I'm going to have her use a range attack just to finish off that devout enemy over there. And that will be the end of him. I can't quite run past all my characters here. So instead I just have to jump over them to get up out of harm's way. There's going to be this tracker, Azak. He's going to run forward, but he dashed to get forward. He doesn't have enough actions to do anything about it. So now I can run forward with Karlak, and I can just use a main hand attack I'm to finish him off. <laughs> There's another goblin a little bit toward the west ready. of us. He's going to want to run down, and he does cast Sacred Flame, but it misses and doesn't do anything on Hulse and the Cave Bear. Now we have Astarian who wants to try to get an uh, attack off on this guy. He's just out of range, so I'm going to move down just a little bit, and then I'm going to use my cunning action hide, so I have the advantage on him. Now I can use the sneak attack range to do a lot of damage to him, but can't quite finish him off. That's okay, though, because it's now going to be the Dark Urge's turn. We're going to move forward, and now we're going to use an elevated and invisible shot to take him down, and that will be the end of that fight. Now we can head back down the rope ladder and just regroup with all of our teammates. And then we're going to continue on over toward the side. We're going to go back over toward Priestess's gut room and we're going to eliminate her up here. We're going to leave Roa Moonglow and all those people alone over on the side. And then we're going to go in this room. Now as soon as she sees Halson, then she's going to attack and be hostile. You can leave him outside the room if you choose to do that. Just separate him from the party. And then you can get some early sneak attacks off on True Soul Gut. But it doesn't really matter. I hit her with one sneak attack range from Astarian. And then I'm going to move him out of the way. And then I can switch on over to the Dark Urge. And I'm going to to hit her with another seek attack ranged and that's going to do some really big critical damage here I got pretty lucky with that one and now I do have my offhand melee attack where I can run forward and end the fight Make sure that you loot True Soul Gut's body. There's a lot of good stuff here, including a Mind Flayer Parasite specimen and the key to her room. So let's grab all of that, and now we're going to head back out. We have done a really good job, so I'm going to just save the game real quick. We do have some more tougher fights up ahead. So once that's all done, we're going to turn toward the left. There's going to be an overlook here that we can see. There's a goblin in a cage and another guy walking around over here. If you walk really close to the edge, then you can get a sneak attack off on this guy, the sharp eye zombie. We'll hit him from afar, eliminating him, and the other enemies are going to be here too. Now we can also try to hit his friend over there, but he's just a little bit out of range. So instead what we're going to do is kind of set up over here and wait for them to come to us. They can't attack us from that far away, so they're going to spend their turns dashing and running around toward us, but we will be very ready for them. We're just going to move around a little bit to try to get into position, waiting for them to run around. And then when it's going to be their turn, now something kind of interesting happened because the enemy decided that they were going to start playing the drums. And when that happens, the war drum will bring other allies toward them, kind of as a way to call in reinforcements. So they're going to do that, and then they're going to continue moving toward us, and we're just going to get into position and wait for them. It's only going to be that one enemy, though, to come toward us right now, so we don't have to worry too much about that. I'm just kind of running over here and waiting for them to move a little bit closer to me. So he's going to dash a little bit closer. And now I'm going to get into position. I'm just going to sit right behind this pillar here so that they can't see me. Now he doesn't know where I am. He's going to foolishly dash up and then he will see my entire party waiting for him there. So the Dark Urge isn't going to do a whole lot right here. I'm just going to switch over to Astarian who will be able to run forward and use a Seek Attack melee attack because I have another character in melee range to distract them. So it does 10 damage there. And now I can use my offhand attack just to finish him off. 
So there we go, that enemy has been eliminated. We didn't have to worry too much about that. And now we're going to continue on down and toward the left. As we go up, then we can attract the attention of all the enemies up here as soon as they spot Helsin. So again, you can leave him off to the side if you really want to. Try to sneak through here and get your early attacks off. But when you can see where they can see, it makes it pretty easy just to sneak around. Karlak and Halson were seen, but that's okay. I can take my other party members around, and the enemies that did see them are kind of stuck right in position here. So I can use one sneak attack with the Dark Urge to do some damage right there, and I'm going to move over to Asarian, who will also do a sneak attack, and will be able to finish off this enemy pretty easily. Now because Asarian and the Dark Urge both have the subclass of Assassin, I can get my bonus action and my normal action refunded when I begin combat. So I hit them with a sneak attack and now I can run forward and I can use another sneak attack to attack the enemy over here. So this is Warrior Bez, I'm going to hit him with a sneak attack and do a lot of damage to him. Now I can switch over to the Dark Urge and I can run forward right next to where Astarian is and then I'm going to use the Seek Attack not on the same enemy but this guy over here, this is Warrior Clack. I'll hit him and eliminate him very easily. Well now let's get ourselves situated. I'm going to move the Dark Urge over to the side and just have him wait there. I don't have to do anything with Halson right now so I can pretty much just skip his turn. Astarian, I'm going to move back a little bit behind the wall and then I'm going to tell him just to hide out back here. And then I'm going to take Karlak forward and she's going to use a ranged attack to finish off that enemy. So I'll eliminate all of these guys without any problems whatsoever. Interestingly though is that the other enemies like Jor Ragslin and the people back there there, they do engage us automatically for some reason. I thought I was this done smithing for. guy thanks us for saving him because he was about to be fed to some spiders and he is going to now run off. Now I can run forward a little bit with the Dark Urge and I'm just going to have him kind of go straight up here along where this bridge is and just kind of hang out and wait for a minute. Now Dror Regslin and his minions are going to run forward. They don't really know where I am or anything, so they can't do a whole lot. But we do get this guy, the Booyagnat, is going to move forward and run out the door, which is going to be a very fatal mistake for them. Now it's only the Dark Urge in the fight at this moment, so I can go forward a little bit. You want to stay just outside of their range of view, and that will give you the correct distance to hit them with the Seek Attack. You can see I'm not quite close enough there, so I can move forward a little bit. Uh, the other enemy over there is a Scrying Eye, don't worry about that one so much. So I did get the Seek Attack off over here, and now I'm able to move around a little bit. Ideally I would have liked to have a little bit more movement speed to move away from where my body was, but that's okay. I can just wait for Jor Ragslin to run around here, and then his other minions will come over to reinforce him. So it's back to the Dark Urge's turn, and I can use another sneak attack in the same position where I just was, and I can do some pretty decent damage starting off against Jor Ragslin. So that did 14 damage against his 97 starting HP, and now I'm going to move around a little bit, just try to retreat so that he can't do a whole lot to me. And now that I'm out of view of him, I can use my cunning action hide just to kind of hide out back here so he doesn't quite know what to do and can't plan out his attacks very well. Well, he's going to run forward. He does kind of see me right there. I am, you know, standing out in the open and everything. And then the enemies will run forward. They do notice Karlak, so she's now a part of the fight. And they can try to attack her if they want to. But I'm not going to worry too much about that because I've got a lot bigger issues. I'm going to switch over to Astarian, who's not currently in combat. And I can sneak right around. And now I can get a sneak attack off on one of the enemies over here that are reinforcing Jor Ragslin. So I'll hit Narvas over here. He's got 10 health. But I will take him out and I can't do anything more with Asarian because it's technically not his turn right now. It is the Dark Urge's turn. But I can switch it over to Lazelle who is out of combat and I can have her attack as well. So she's going to do a ranged attack against Kagren. It'll take away about half of his health and now she is a part of the battle as well. Well, it's still technically the Dark Urge's turn, so I'll go to him, but then I will manually switch over to Halson and run forward. He's going to get in battle, and that's all that I can do with that. I can't act with him. 
Now back to the Dark Urge, there's not a lot that I can do without provoking an attack of opportunity. However, what I can do is disengage from the fight. I'll use my bonus action to be able to run away without provoking that attack of opportunity. And when I get out of range, then what I'm going to do is use just a normal attack because a sneak attack won't work in this situation, to attack Cogren and I'm going to eliminate him. So once he's out of the way, then I will turn invisible, and now Droragslin can't see me, so he's going to have to dash to get in range of anyone. He does run over here right into the middle of my group, and then uses Repulsor, which is very unfortunate, because it actually knocked Astarian down into the spider pit below, and that's really bad for me. So I didn't much appreciate that, and I can now use Karlak with her turn. I'm going to Frenzy, and then I'm going to be able to attack Jorah Raglan up close and personally. I really wanted to go for the Lacerate here to get the bleeding damage, but I only had a 65% chance of hitting him. I thought it was worth it, so I went for it, but I did miss. So that's kind of unfortunate for me, but it's kind of just the story of my life, I guess. Now back to the Dark Urge, I can use a sneak attack range to do a little bit more damage against him, and he's going to take about 14 damage from that one. And now what I want to do is just run away behind the wall here so that he can't see me, and I'm going to use my cunning action hide just to hide out from him here. So Asarian's down here, I can't do a whole lot right now, I don't want to try to engage those spiders that are down here, and I can't hit him, I don't want to move any closer toward the north end of this area either because that's going to provoke attacks from those spiders. So instead I'll run south toward the gate and then just wait here. It's Dora Regson's turn, he's going to rage out and then start attacking Karlak who's right next to him. He does some pretty decent damage against her, but she's still standing. With Halsen, I'm going to run up. He did get pushed back as well from that Repulsor attack, and it took a little bit of damage, but I can just use Lunar Mend to get all that health back. So that's about all that I can do for now. I'm going to end that turn. And now what I'm going to do is get a little bit of revenge against him. I'm going to take Lazelle, who has a lot of strength. Remember, we dumped two extra points into strength. So she has a good strength multiplier here and some good athletics. So I'm going to push him down into the pit below. Only a 45% chance of this working, but I do get it to work. And now he is down, and that's going to get the attention of the spiders who are down there as well. And they're not going to like him very much. So they're kind of a neutral party. They will attack anyone. They'll attack me or attack Draragslin. <laughs> now on tactician difficulty, the enemy does try to prioritize attacking targets with the lowest armor class. And unfortunately for me, that's going to be Astarian. So they're going to be kind of focused on him and he's going to have a bad day down in the pit there. So the smaller giant spider will attack Astarian and take him down. He is down, but he's not quite dead yet. I do have three turns to try to resurrect him. From a tactical standpoint, I'm in a very good position because the enemy will be fighting amongst themselves down below. I get to stay up top and just shoot arrows down toward them. Jor Ragslin is a melee character, so he can't do a whole lot of damage against me at this point. He can try to throw stuff up at me, but it's not going to do a lot. Now, I do have to worry about those spiders a little bit because they can attack at a range, but I'm not worried about anyone getting up close to me. Even if Astarian dies down there, that's fine. I've got Scrolls of Revivify. I can just pick him up after the fight. So it's not a big deal whatsoever just to take my time and let the enemy kill themselves down below. You'll see that Jor Ragslin, he does get off a lot of really strong attacks, but I also have the spiders fighting on my behalf as well. He does use Repulsor to knock Asarian even closer to the gate, which I suppose is fine. Halson is also a melee fighter, and it's too early for me to jump down there without taking significant damage. So instead, I'm just going to stay up top here, shooting arrows down with my other characters, and then once Dror Ragslin and the spiders can kill each other off, or at least severely weaken each other, then I'll jump down there and join the fight to finish them off. So, Dror Ragslin does not take a lot of damage from these range attacks. I'm only getting rolls of at most three damage here. I do get a little bit more damage, however, when I use the sneak attacks from the Dark Urge. So, at least that's a little bit beneficial for me. But other than that, it's a very slow process of just ticking away little bits of his health 
with every attack. But I'd rather attack him than attack the spiders because I need the spiders to stay alive and fight for me against Roar Ragslin. So it is just a battle of attrition at this point using the little damage that I can. A little bit adds up over time. And with the Dark Urge, I'll just use Sneak Attacks and then go back to using Cunning Action Hide so that I can get another advantage shot. Well, Jorragson killed off one spider, that's all right for me. And then he does throw something up at Karlak, but misses, not a big deal. He can't jump up high enough, so we don't have to worry about that at all. I do have the ability to run around and get different vantage point shots up here. So I'll take Lazelle around and then she'll be able to attack from the side doing just one more damage to Jora Ragslin. And then Karlak will do the same thing. She'll run around the side and get another attack off on him. This time I do three damage, so again, very little damage coming out, but that's okay. We're just working our way through them pretty easily, and the spiders are doing a good job of attacking for us. So now I'm going to use another sneak attack, range attack, with the Dark Urge. That'll do a lot of damage to him. He's very close to dying, and I just have to wait out for the next turn to be able to finish him off. Now, he will run over here and attack the spider. He does miss, but he fouls it up and does a lot of damage with the second attack. So, like I said before, Halson is a melee fighter. I am now going to jump down there and join the fight. So, he has two attacks that we can really use. His claws is his normal attack that I can use every turn, but multi-attack does a lot more damage and I can only use it once per fight. So what I'm going to do is just to focus on using Claws right now. It's a guaranteed kill against Jorah Ragslin as long as it hits him with a 94% chance. That's pretty good. I hit him and he goes down. And now there's only the smaller spider that I have to deal with. But he's not a big deal. I also need to save Asarian. He's on his last turn. So I jumped down with Karlak right next to him and then I was able to help him up. So he gained one health. I also could have thrown a potion down there if I couldn't get there with enough uh, movement speed or anything like that. So he's now up and that's all right. Now it's Karlak's turn. I'm gonna have her jump down right next to Halson. She's now in melee range, so I'm going to have her use her reckless attack and try to eliminate this enemy. I can do up to 18 damage here. It only has 15 and I hit 13, so the enemy only has two health left. That's okay, it should be pretty easy to kill him, right? Well, you'll find out that my luck is pretty bad when it comes to these things. The spider does attack Astarian, which I guess that's actually probably the best thing. He only had one health and he went down. I can pick him up for free, no problem. The Dark Urge misses a ranged attack. That's pretty unfortunate for me. So now I'm going to switch it over to Halson the Cave Bear. He's going to try to run around, but he gets stuck in a web and can't attack. So I can't do anything there either. Trying to use Lazel. I'll try to shoot with a ranged attack, and that was a big miss. So I missed or wasn't able to attack three turns in a row. Now I can bring Carlette closer. She's going to use just a normal main hand attack. And luckily, this one does connect and ends that spider. Now, the combat technically doesn't end because that scrying eye is hanging out up top there. So I can't really do anything to speed this up so much. I'm just going to have to deal with it but I can start to move the Dark Urge around and I want to start attacking it to take it out. Now I'm going to not have quite enough movement speed on this turn, but that's okay. I'll get around to it the next turn. Now I'm going to have Lazelle pick up a Starion right here, and then there's going to be this gate right next to me. I have to hit this lever. Lazelle can't get to it, and also Astarian cannot get to it. So I'm going to then use Karlak to use a ranged attack. If I hit a lever with an arrow, it does cause it to activate. So that will raise up the gate, and now I can get all of my characters out of here up above. This part does take quite some time. It took a couple minutes just to get all my characters up and out of the webs and everything, and dealing with this scrying eye that's hanging out over here. 
Now what's very interesting is that I tried everything I could to deal damage to this thing. So I tried to hide out, I used sneak attack range, which is probably my most damaging thing that I can do, and it does absolutely no damage whatsoever. So I can't really take this out until my other party members get up here. Like I said before, it takes a couple minutes to get all the way up here for me, so I am going to skip ahead in the footage until when we're actually taking out that scrying eye. Well, my party is now all assembled right outside the door to this back area where Minthara is. I am not able to attack the Scrying Eye yet with Lazel, but when I run up, I do grab the attention of the guards that are hanging out back there. So I'm just going to get into position over here. The Scrying Eye doesn't do anything. It just uses the Psychic Resonance that doesn't do any damage to us. So I can really just leave it for right now. Now, I wanted to get the Dark Urge to do something against this guy, but I'm not really able to do anything against it so even though i try range attacks and seek attack and melee it doesn't really matter nothing is really doing any damage to this thing at all i'm gonna move a starion up and then pass the turn over to the enemy it's rosak's turn he's going to run away from me for some reason and then he's going to use reckless war cry all by himself even though he could have been buffing his teammate i have no idea why they decided to do that Let's move Halson up a little bit as much as he can, and then it's going to be Lazel's turn. I can't quite reach the enemy back here, and I probably would have grabbed Minthara's attention anyway had I done that. So instead, I'm going to try to do some damage to the Scrying Eye while I can, but it does zero damage as well, so I don't know what to do against this thing. Well, Scrut, the other enemy, is going to run forward. He's going to throw a stone at Astarian, who only had one HP, so he's down once again. And then he's going to hit Karlak, bringing her down to just four health. So I'm a little bit wounded right now, but I will be able to endure this one. There's not a lot that I can do right now as the Dark Urge, so what I'm going to do is just try to hide out, but that doesn't work so well for me. Instead, I'm just going to go behind the wall and just wait out the rest of my turn here using a cunning action hide. So now I'm hidden from them. Razak is going to now run toward me and he's going to join the fight. Okay, we're going to move Halson up a little bit further on. He cannot help Astarian. So unfortunately, your pets and your ally companions, they can't do anything to help out your team members when they fall down, but they can still do lots of damage. Gonna move up Lazel, doing an attack against one of the guards there, and the pommel strike that I used to follow up is a giant miss. So that didn't work out so well for me. I don't move her, so I don't get an opportunity attack against me, and then I can use Karlak to try to do a little bit more damage against this enemy. She does nine damage, which is pretty good, and then I'm going to move her up the ladder here so that she gets up to the higher ground that makes it less likely for the enemy to be able to hit her with only her four health. Trying to save her is going to be a top priority for me. Well, this enemy starts running around, and I do get Lazel to attack it as he's running past me, and then he's going to do a little more damage to me, but it's okay. Uh, Lazel's doing all right health-wise. It's now time for the Dark Urge's turn, so I wanted to use a Seek Attack melee to try to take out this enemy really fast, but when I ran around the corner, I attacked him, and it was a critical miss. And then I thought, well, he's only got three health, let's just use an offhand attack, and that was also a miss. Great luck on my side today. Well, the enemy is going to start throwing some stones over at Halson, but that's okay, he's got tons of health to spare. Now I can just run him up, and I can use him to attack Scrut, and that will end him very nicely. So once his turn is done, it's going to go back over to Lazelle. She's going to try to get an attack in on Razak, and that is another miss. So I'm really not doing great with those attacks. I do get to use my second win, though, just to refill all of her health. And so she's in good shape. Using Karlak, I can hit it with a range attack. It will only do three damage, so it's not very good, but it's better than missing. And then I'm going to move her out of the way of the ladder just so that I can send another party member up to have an advantage from up high. So now it's the Dark Urge's turn. Let's climb up there and then we're going to be able to attack from up high pretty nicely. We use a sneak attack range and we're going to do exactly 24 damage to him. That's exactly what we needed to take him out. That was a very nice critical hit for us. So now it's going to be... Uh, 
the cave bear's turn. We'll run forward and attack the scrying eye. Finally, we do some damage against it. We get a critical hit for only eight damage, but I guess that's, again, better than missing and better than nothing. Lazel will pick up a Starion, so he's back in the fight, and then I'm going to pass it over to Karlak. She's standing right next to a treasure chest up here, so let's open up the wooden chest. There's a couple silver pieces up here, so we can grab those just to sell them a little bit later on. Now, I thought that I was going to be really clever here because I wanted to jump across this gap so that I could have a good shot at Minthara down below. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that the developers came up with the thought that you can't shoot her from this corner. It would just be a little bit too easy. So she is just out of range here. Even if I moved to the very edge of the corner there, I still would not be able to hit her. So she's just barely out of range for those seek attacks. It's a little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. I do have another way to take her out pretty easily. The Scrying Eye is slowly dying. I just have to finish it off with one more critical attack, and then it's going to be all over from there. I'm going to split off the Dark Urge from the rest of the party because I don't want him to follow them around. I just want him to stay up on the perch right here. And now I'm going to take Halson around. I don't want to get too close to Minthara right now. I just want to kind of go around where she can't see me, around these bookshelves here, and just kind of hang out over in this area by the ladder. He's very big and it's very difficult to navigate him through here, but you can kind of park him right next to this ladder here. And then I'll take the other party members and just move them kind Kind of to the same area over here sneaking around i want to get just outside of where her field of view is and just kind of wait right in this area and then i want to move all the party members up into that same spot so that they're all pretty close and able to attack her soon now before we fight her i'm going to toggle the non-lethal attacks on because i do not want to kill her i'm pretty sure that if she gets knocked out here and not killed we can recruit her later on in act two i don't know if that's for sure or not but i'm gonna give it a try by not killing her here well when the time to fight has come i just have to walk into her line of sight and then she'll try to buff herself with soul branding and run closer to us I am able to move Halson over here. I'm going to use multi-attack to get two attacks in on the same turn, and that's going to do some pretty good damage, 20 in total, and that will end his turn. It's now Asarian's turn. I want to hit her with a sneak attack ranged. All I have to do is to climb up the nearby ladder, and I tried to get the extra advantage by going into hiding. Unfortunately, she did spot me up here, so I wasn't able to do that, but I could still get a sneak attack ranged off on her from up here. Now it's going to be Lazelle's turn, and I'm going to have her jump right over to where Minthara is. If I was really thinking, then I would have also brought in the Dark Urge at this point, because he could hit from up here, and that probably would have ended the fight right there. Unfortunately, I didn't do that, so I get the critical hit with Lazelle, and then switch over to Karlak, who can then do an attack against her from here. Unfortunately, it doesn't do enough damage. I would have had to have a perfect attack roll, but I just didn't quite get it. In retaliation, Minthara turns around and downs Karlak, so that's a little unfortunate, but that's all right. I now have Lazel. Just wanted to double check to make sure that my non-lethal attacks are toggled on, so I don't kill Minthara with this next attack. Instead, I just knock her out and get a cutscene with Halson. You did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No. That's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. I need your help. And you'll receive it soon enough. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. That does complete the kill Korga quest. We did not have to actually kill her. We're going to leave it up to Halson to scold her thoroughly. And we also get an inspiration point for Lazelle called a Headless Horde. Let's now go back down the ladder and we're going to rejoin our party members. We do have to pick up Karlak because she's unfortunately still on the ground, but we just have to run close to her and we can choose to help her and that will just pick her up and give her one HP back. 
Once Karlak's up, we're going to rejoin our party members together, and then we're going to loot Minthara's body. We want to take her weapon, as well as her boots. We're going to take her spider's lyre, and her supply pack, and her spider silk armor. That's a really nice armor for us. I don't feel the need to take all of her other common items, so she gets to keep those for right now. Hopefully I see her again in the Moonrise Towers in Act 2, but if not, well, it was nice knowing her. As far as what we looted, the boots of striding that we got, when we cast a spell that requires concentration, you gain momentum from one turn, and when you're concentrating on a spell, you can't be knocked prone or moved against your will. The spider silk armor is really good for us. We gain a plus one bonus to our stealth checks and an advantage on constitution saving throws. So we're going to put that onto the dark urge, and that's going to be nice for us. You can head back over to her table here, and you can grab the scroll of blur that's just sitting on Minthara's table. And there's going to be a gilded chest in the back that you can open up to get the water sparkers, as well as a little bit of gold. The water sparkers are kind of interesting. When you stand in water during combat, the water becomes electrified, and if the wearer starts their turn on an electrified surface, they gain three lightning charges. I can think of an interesting wizard build that would incorporate those things, or maybe a sorcerer build. So I'm just kind of thinking about that as I want to use Gale going forward. Maybe I'll try to incorporate those at a later time. There's an elixir of potion resistance over here on the shelf that you can grab if you want to, and then we can just kind of loot the other bodies as we go through. We haven't gone and gotten the treasure behind Jor Ragslin's throne, so we want to go down there and loot his body. Remember, we left him down in the spider pit where we killed him before. So let's run down there real quick and then loot his body to grab all the stuff that's down here. Not everything is super useful, but definitely grab the Scroll of Speak with the Dead, Draregslin's Key, the Faith Breaker, and the Mind Flayer Parasite Specimen. If you get encumbered, just make sure that you move equipment around to different party members so that you can give some things over to, like, Karlak and Lazel, who have a lot higher strength than what we have. Now, as I ran through, I was not exactly expecting to encounter any enemies back here. I thought that I'd killed them all. Unfortunately, I was very wrong. So as you move forward, just be aware that you'll probably be spotted by some enemies here and you'll have to get into a fight. So there's a couple over here on the right side and then one up the stairs. I'll use a sneak attack to try to eliminate this enemy and then go into hiding. So that enemy is now dead and I'm invisible, so I can hang out in this room without much of an issue. I will, however, just run back and let the enemy try to run toward me. I'll get my other party members out of here as best as possible, but it won't be quite enough if the enemies have range attacks. They can attack and do a little bit of damage against me. So I'm going to move Lazelle back a little bit and really just let the Dark Urge take the enemy down from here. I'll just run up a little bit and I'm still invisible so I do have the advantage and I can take out this enemy. Even though I have the low ground, it doesn't really matter. I can still attack this guy. I do get the miss, however, that's a little bit unfortunate, and that means that I also lose my ability to be invisible, but I can still go into hiding. I've got that plus one now for stealth checks, thanks to that spider silk armor, and that allows me to hide even though I'm still within the enemy's field of view. I'm gonna move Lazelle up a little bit, and then she's going to take a ranged attack against the enemy up here at the top of the stairs. She'll do a little bit of damage against it, not enough to kill it, however, but I'll use my own hiding sneak attack range to finish off this enemy and turn myself invisible. While I'm still invisible, I'm gonna hurry over to the side and then try to get another sneak attack range off on one of the enemies over here. So I'll attack this guy, Warrior Huck, by the drum. I get a big old miss on that one, unfortunately, but the enemy is surprised, so I'm going to use my other sneak attack range to attack him. Because he was surprised, it's an instant critical hit, and that means that I can take him out pretty easily. Still being invisible now, I can run up to the upper floor and I can look for the other enemy that's hiding out up here. I see him over there, but he's out of range for my sneak attack right now. That's okay, I can just run forward and he hasn't attacked yet. He doesn't know that I'm here. So I'll hit him and it doesn't do enough damage. However, he is surprised, so I can just use my sneak attack again, 
get that critical hit and kill him off. So that's all the enemies there. They've all been eliminated. I didn't take damage from them. And now I can use Jorah Regzin's key to open up those gates, taking me into the treasure room where I can loot his treasure crates. There's a lot of good stuff in here, including some more infernal iron. We definitely need that to be able to give it to Karlak a little bit later on when she gets to act two. And then Damon can fix her heart a little bit more. We collected a lot of good stuff around here, so I'm going to go over to Lazelle and give her the Gloves of the Growling Underdog. That gives her an advantage on melee attack rolls when I'm surrounded by two or more enemies, which seems like it's a likely thing to have happen. Now I don't have to run all the way out of here, thankfully there are some more enemies in the entrance that I don't really want to fight because my health is so low for some of the characters. So instead I'm just going to fast travel out of here and we're going to head over to the Emerald Grove and Byron's Waypoint and meet up with Halson inside the grove. But that's going to wait until the next episode. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. We made some great progress in this part and I can't wait to show you more of what this game has to offer in tactician mode with the Dark Urge character. So I'll see you very soon for part four. Until then, thanks for watching and have a good day.